Labor MP Josh Burns out of Victoria now and we'll begin our conversation there. Josh, good to see you. Thanks for coming, by the way. So Trudy just outlined a couple of numbers there. Uh, AGL customers facing price hikes in your state, 5.6%. New South Wales and Queensland, though, much higher, 17.5%, 18% respectively. People are going to feel the pinch there, aren't they? Absolutely. Good morning, Pete, and good morning to your viewers. It's clear that the cheapest form of electricity is renewable energy. This is something that the AMO have been saying long before the election and long before we formed government a month ago. AMO have been saying consistently that the cheapest form of energy is renewable energy firmed up with some form of dispatchable energy. We need to be able to, to store uh, the wind and solar power that we generate. Uh, and you know, Australians will be looking at their price, or their electricity bills at the moment and going, we, we really, they're going to feel this. This is going to be really hard for a lot of families. Uh, inflation is really biting and the price of electricity is going to hurt a lot of families. And you know, long term, we really need to uh, create more sovereignty in the energy market, make sure Australians have access to the cheapest form of energy, reliable energy. Uh, and as AEMO have said, long before we, we form government, uh, that form of energy is renewables backed up with some form of storage or dispatchable energy. Well, you've got a fair bit of work to do, at least in the next term of government to get this underway. So AEMO says wind and solar, nine times what it is now, that's where it needs to be. Storage, three times what it needs to be by 2050. Can that be achieved? Oh, absolutely, Pete. I mean, one of the things that we've seen extraordinarily over the past decade is complete and utter inaction and a government that was fighting against the electricity sector and fighting against capital markets and the private sector. What we want to do is encourage the private sector to invest in renewables, give them certainty. It's one of the reasons why we're going to be introducing our first set of climate uh, legislation into the parliament when it resumes in a month. Uh, we want to provide certainty for private sector to invest in Australian uh, industry and energy creation. And the good news is, Pete, is that we've modelled this. We've costed it. Uh, this is exactly the sort of projects that we brought and did the planning work prior to the election. And it's going to create thousands and thousands of jobs in the meantime. This is yeah. going to be so important for Australia's prosperity going into the future. And it's, uh, it's, it's something that we need to get started on straight away. Yeah, and a lot of these plans are long term when it comes to renewables. Short term is the problem right now, though. And the first question, I suppose, should be how do you guarantee reliable baseload power in the meantime uh, to work alongside the developments of renewable energy? Do you need to invest more in coal in the short term? Well, I think there's a couple of points to make, Pete. First of all is that we showed over the last couple of weeks that we would work with the uh, market operator to ensure that Australians have access to reliable power and electricity. It's essential. We can't have hospitals having their lights turn off. Uh, we need to make sure that there's reliable power and we'll obviously be responsible in all of that. But I think what AEMO is talking about and what our focus is really about, well, how do we plan for the future? How do we have an electricity grid that isn't reliant on... Uh, European uh, fluctuations. It isn't reliant on, uh, you know, the, the abhorrent invasion of Ukraine or, or affected by the abhorrent invasion of Ukraine by Vladimir Putin. That Australia's electricity system stands on, on its own two feet, and we have a desert the size of the Sahara. We have an offshore wind capability perhaps larger than any other country on Earth. Uh, we, there's a reason why the Prime Minister keeps saying we can be an energy, a renewable energy superpower, is because there's huge potential in the. Uh, mm. abundance of resources that we have at our disposal as a country. And that includes coal. So, so does, that, does that need more investment in the future, I guess is my point, in the, in the short term, to, to fill that gap, to, to get you through to when those higher levels of renewables are online? Well, the problem is, is that coal is a very expensive form of creating energy and there's a reason why none of the private sector, Pete, is investing in new coal generation is because it's just so... Uh, uneconomical. The return on investment is just not there. And AEMO have been saying this for a long time, that the cheapest form of energy creation is renewable, so wind and solar, with some sort of firming capacity. Uh, obviously, hydro is something that the previous government under Malcolm Turnbull invested in, uh, but there's also batteries that state governments around the country are leading on. We want to create 400 community batteries. Uh, and then as a as a a potential peaking uh, option, gas has played a role in that as well. Um, but 
to be truthful, the cheapest form of energy is not coal. And it would be it would be pretty silly economic management to be funding coal fire power from taxpayer dollars when there are cheaper, uh, more reliable forms of energy that we should be investing in. Josh Burns, we'll leave it there. Thanks for your time, though. We'll talk to you soon.